Oh, fuck. God damn it. Early in my career as a freelancer, I was a late night worker. Not, not like a prostitute. I would just procrastinate through the day and so I couldn't put off my work any longer. I'd often be up past 2 a.m. It wasn't until I started living with my partner, Natalie, that I decided to shape my schedule around hers. It's at that point that I fell in love with early mornings. There's something special about watching the sunrise with a cup of coffee. Even in a city like Los Angeles, things seem to go quiet in the morning. Well, not all the time. I usually wake up between 6 and 7 a.m., but my schedule fluctuates. I wondered how much more productive could I be if I forced myself to wake up at 5 a.m. every single day for 30 days? How much more could I get done? How would it change my life? It didn't go as planned. So I'm going to be setting up my alarm for the 30 days of waking up at 5 a.m. How many hours of sleep do you need each night? We're gonna go with eight hours. So my plan is to go to bed at 9 p.m. every night. Let's see how this works out. Getting to bed by 9 p.m. isn't isn't a problem. I'm getting kind of old anyway, and Nat and I for a long time were going to bed around nine o'clock, so this is nothing new. Waking up early isn't an excuse to neglect sleep. The research is clear. The serious consequences of getting less than seven hours of sleep per night is severe. According to Matthew Walker's best-selling book, Why We Sleep, the shorter you sleep, the shorter your lifespan. The old maxim, I'll sleep when I'm dead, is therefore unfortunate. Adopt this mindset and you will be dead sooner and the quality of that shorter life will be worse. The real challenge here isn't waking up at 5 a.m. It's getting eight hours of sleep. There was an adjustment period for the first week. It was a bit like jet lag and my sleep quality wasn't the greatest for the first couple of nights. I had to get used to going to bed at a different time than nap. Good night, honey. I love you. Enjoy The Bachelor. But after a couple days, I felt a lot more like myself, and my mornings started to get a lot more productive. Then I had to deal with real jet lag. I'm heading home to New Jersey, which is three-hour time difference. So just as I've finally gotten adjusted to these early mornings, Now I'm going to have to completely reset. This is probably going to be the biggest test so far. Uh, What's that? LAX airport. Yeah, LAX, that's right. Alaska Airlines. I never would leave an apartment with a banana. (laughs) Why? That's just a rule of mine. Never leave an apartment with a banana. It's like the best travel (laughs) food. No, it's not, because then you have the skin that you have to get rid of, and then you just hold on to it for 45 minutes. No, then I'm going to throw it away in the trash can at the airport. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's going to be a 45 minute nice. drive. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, well, give me a hug. <laughs> oh, I got it. Wow. Hey, Dad. What's up, dude? How are you doing? I'm having a dilemma. There's nowhere to sleep. I'm supposed to be sleeping on that couch right there. Okay, here's a sheet on the bottom Thank and there's you. a sheet for the top of you. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Mom. Appreciate it. There's blankets out there. I see. <laughs> so it's just past 11 now. Finally getting to bed. I'm getting no sleep tonight. If there's one thing I've learned about habit change, it's that life gets in the way. When you least expect it, life will punch you in the face. And that's what happened with my trip home. Multiple late nights, hanging out with my family, combined with jet lag, and I struggled to get quality sleep. So it's just past nine right now, and this is, I just found out that this is daylight savings time. It's been a long time since I've experienced sleep deprivation, but that night in particular hit me hard. Over my first two days in New Jersey, I got a total of nine hours of sleep, and it completely changed my personality. Did you ever see me like that before? Very few times. Very few times that low. You weren't just upset, you were so frustrated. I felt bad for you. I decided to catch up with my sleep and snooze past 5 a.m. two times during the trip. (laughs) 
And this is what happens to me all the time when I try to wake up early or if I try to build a habit, I try to start exercising, eventually something's gonna happen. You're gonna get sick, you're gonna travel, you're gonna go on vacation and you're gonna get jet lag and you're not gonna be able to keep up with the same exact routine that you've been trying to build. This was just a reminder that I need to put my health and my wellness first above this religious dedication to an arbitrary challenge. After getting back to LA, it took another week until I started to get into a rhythm again. And travel wasn't completely to blame. So finally, after about 20 days of waking up at 5 a.m. and after a really unproductive week, one of the most unproductive weeks that I've had in a while, I've started to build a bit of a morning routine here at 5 a.m. that works for me. And a part of that is by 5.30 a.m. I'm on my way to go to the gym to get a workout in. And I found that since the sun, at least right now, it doesn't rise until 7 a.m., it's really difficult for me to feel motivated, to feel like I have the energy to do really creative work first thing in the morning. So if I go to the gym, I can get more energy, I feel good, I've gotten something personal for myself done at the beginning of the day, and then by the time I get home and shower, around then the sun's starting to come up and I can make a cup of coffee and I'm ready to actually get to work. So it turns out that waking up at 5 a.m. every day did change my life. Uh, it just happened to be in a negative way. While I did have about seven hours and 53 minutes in bed every night, I didn't get eight hours of sleep. In fact, it usually takes me about 30 minutes to get to sleep, so I probably got much less than I needed. I noticed that my energy levels weren't as high as normal. And while I did eventually put together a routine that worked for me, going to the gym in the morning, and then eventually getting to work by 7 a.m., I, I wasn't any more productive than I normally am. And there was just too much that I sacrificed. You can, you can ask Natalie. I mean, she sacrificed a little bit too. I thought it was complete bull I'm exhausted. Why are you exhausted? Because you've been waking me up at 5 a.m. every morning. I did not opt into this challenge. <laughs> like next month with meditation, yes, I'm rather excited to do that with you. This was not a challenge I opted into, I was forced into. One of the things that I love most about running my own business is having a flexible schedule. I'm glad that I experimented with this ridiculously strict 30 day challenge because I know that I'm actually not missing out on anything. And I'm excited to get back to my regular routine of waking up between six or 7 a.m. because well, life can get in the way. Thanks for watching. Do you want to join me for future 30 day challenges? If so, subscribe to my newsletter, mattdiavella.com slash newsletter. There's a link down in the description. You can also find out through social media on Instagram and Twitter. There's also links down there as well if you want. If you enjoy this video, if you want to support my channel, and if you also want additional content that I don't release anywhere else, you can get that at Patreon, on Patreon, at patreon.com slash mattdiavella. <laughs> if you sign up for the exclusive videos tier on Patreon, you'll get instant access to over 20 videos, interviews, and podcast episodes, with new videos coming every month. Like my full one-hour interview with essentialist author Greg McEwen. Get my monthly AMA podcast where I answer patron questions about creativity and minimalism. And get behind-the-scenes videos on how I make my videos. Plus, it helps me pay the bills and invest back into my videos here on YouTube, all for $12 a month. Thanks for considering. And of course, if you do not have the money to contribute, please do not feel pressured to do so. The fact that you watch my videos is enough for me. See you next time.